Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Amen. What a great way to be brought into worship this morning, December 27th. We've made it through the season of Advent. The circle of light has been completed. We have worshiped Christmas Eve, and now we're into the season of Christmas Tide. I want to welcome all of our guests and our members today watching this worship service, participating in worship from coast to coast. Hey, maybe even around the world, who knows? But together, we are gathered by the Holy Spirit, who brings us together. Today we worship Christ our Lord, and so let us now ready our hearts together as we come to this time. Today's call to worship, friends, call, comes to us from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 6. Will you now please join with me in the call to worship? With the prophet Isaiah, we proclaim the promise of God the people, the people who, who walked in darkness have seen a great light. light. Those, Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Indeed, friends, we celebrate the birth of Christ into our lives this day as we now come to our first hymn, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. Infant Holy, Infant Lowly, for his bed a cattle stall, oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the babe. do indeed remember this day that Christ was born for us. And so as we are now drawn into this time of confession, a moment of repentance, we are to recall this birth that we come to the very throne of God because God has first come near to us, that we confess and we repent the things that are upon our hearts, not because we feel like we have to, but because God's love compels us to. Friends, that's the power of love. We know it. Love allows us and helps us to do things that perhaps normally we wouldn't do. But when love comes near in the way that it has come near to us in this Christmas season, we respond in kind with our lives. And so first, we come to a moment of silent confession, a moment in which we come before our God and confess the things that are upon our hearts so that we might find freedom. And then, friends, after this moment of silent confession, then together in unison, let us pray together that prayer that we see before us. Let us now bow our heads together and let us pray.
Let us now pray aloud together. Faithful Faithful God, God, you love love righteousness and and hate wickedness. wickedness. Yet we we have have not not lived lived lives of integrity integrity and truth. truth. We We have have failed failed to honor honor you. We We repent repent of these faults and turn turn to you in love. love. Pardon Pardon our offenses offenses and purify our our hearts, hearts, that our lives may glorify glorify you to the the ends ends of the earth. earth. For the the sake sake of of our our Savior, Savior, Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Indeed, friends, amen. And now hear these words of forgiveness. They are meant for each one of us this morning. Sons and daughters of God, receive the good news. The light of Christ shines in our darkness to bring light and life to all. By the gift of Christ, know that your sins are forgiven. Amen and hallelujah. Now, friends, we come to our first reading for this morning, Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 57, verses 7 through 10. Let us now listen to the word of the Lord. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices together They shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm at the side of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Oh, baby. 
that was sent from above to the earth. Well, welcome to the time with the children once again. Pastor Joel is the youngest person here. <laughs> so today I have another word, and this is actually one of my least favorite words. It is the word stingy. Mm. Does anybody know what stingy means? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I think you know what stingy means. And basically what stingy comes down to is I don't have enough for me and you, so I'm just going to keep it for me. And the reason why I bring up that word is because in today's scripture, which is from 1 John, Jesus talks about how he came into the world and that he is the light and that there was enough light for everyone, which means that we don't need to be stingy with it because not only is there enough for me and you, there's enough for everybody. And I think that's really neat that he used that example because have you ever been in the dark and had a flashlight, and you turned it on, and you turned to your friend and say, listen, this is my flashlight. You don't look in the light. You don't get to see where we're going just because you're walking next to me. You can't do that. When we have light and it shines, everybody gets to see it. You can't keep it from people. It just naturally happens so that it gets rid of the darkness. So that's my reminder today is don't be stingy with the light. And the light is Christ, because there's enough for me, there's enough for you, there's enough for everybody. So let's pray. Lord, it's really easy to think that I don't quite have enough. And it's important for you to remind me that you are always enough. Amen. Thank you, Tina, for that reminder. Well, friends, I want to wish everyone once again a Merry Christmas. After this season of Advent, we have now entered into Christmas tide, the season of the year that allows us to truly revel in the joy of God, in the light of the world. We celebrate the birth of Christ this day and remember that with his arrival in this world, we are not alone. Now, on Christmas Eve, we read all these great stories, didn't we? The wonderful story from the Gospel of Luke about Joseph and Mary and the shepherds and the angels. It's such a great and powerful story. We hold it near and dear to our hearts. But in order to understand what Jesus is all about, we need to go back before his actual birth in this world. Because underneath it all, something is still missing. And that's where the Gospel of John enters in. In John's Gospel, Jesus cannot be introduced by his mere birth in this world. In fact, Jesus cannot be really understood unless we connect him with creation itself. In Genesis 1-1, we read, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And yet John goes back even further, for although Genesis has its start at the beginning of time, John takes us back to a time when only God existed. And it is in that time that when only God existed that John begins his story of Jesus. And so let us now encounter our gospel reading for this morning. It comes to us from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Listen now to the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. 
The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of a human's decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. O Lord, our God, as we come to your word this day, we pray that you will help us to hear it once more. Hear it afresh, hear it anew. Give me, Lord, the words to speak, words of truth, words that point to you, words that open up your gospel. Give us the ears to hear and the minds to understand so that together as your disciples, we may hear your truth and follow you in this Christmas season. And we pray this in your great and beautiful name. Amen. Well, in his gospel, Jesus does not have his name uttered until verse 17 in this gospel of John. Instead, John calls him all these other things. He calls him the word. And it's a reminder of all these great titles that Jesus has been given, especially in the gospel of John. Savior, the Lord Almighty, Healer, Redeemer, Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, the good shepherd, the door, the vine. But it begins with calling Jesus this first name, the word. The word is translated from the Greek word logos, which means a multitude of things. It's actually quite difficult to translate it because of how many different things it could mean. It can mean speech, thought, concept, a saying, a message, reason, a conversation. The way we translate logos really has everything to do with the context into which it is being used. And in the case of our passage, logos is connected with God speaking, with creation, with the beginning of things. It's the physical manifestation. It is God speaking sound into creation. And just like our speech is an extension of who we are, so too is the logos of God. Therefore, Jesus, as the word of God, is God with us in the flesh, appearing to be like us and yet still fully God. This is important as we try to understand the significance of Jesus. Because if the first time he existed is similar to the first time that we've existed when we were born into the world, then nothing about him would be really any different from any one of us. God has given other humans the ability to work miracles, to do things that seem impossible, to speak words of wisdom. We call them prophets. People, even through the power of God, have been raised from the dead. But Jesus, if he is indeed God in human form, if he indeed has existed from the beginning of time, that then does change everything for us. That's why John here at the beginning of his gospel is going to great pains to reveal that from the beginning perhaps even before the beginning itself. Jesus has been around as the word. He is the very voice of creation, now born in the flesh. How about that, friends? How cool and amazing is that, that the voice of creation has been born among us as a human? Hey, maybe John chapter 1 is a Christmas story after all. This passage reminds me of a book written by one of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis. Lewis is perhaps most famous for writing the Chronicles of Narnia, a series of novels centered around a group of children that have either wandered or have been called into a mysterious land called Narnia, where creatures can talk. At the center of the story is Aslan, the Christ figure, who in these series of novels is murdered, then resurrected, especially in this first book that was written, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. The scene within that novel has many parallels with the crucifixion of Christ. But the story of how Narnia came to be is told in The Magician's Nephew, where two children, Diggory and Polly, through magic, of course, stumble into Narnia, 
when it's in the midst of being born. First, there was nothing. The world into which these two had just jumped was just dark. Quoting Lewis, then a voice began to sing. It was very far away, and Diggory found it hard to decide from what direction it was coming. Sometimes it seemed to come from all directions at once. Sometimes he almost thought it was coming out of the earth beneath them. Its lower notes were deep enough to be the voice of the earth itself. There were no words. It was hardly a tune. But it was beyond comparison the most beautiful sound he had ever heard. And then out of that singing came light. And the children could see that it was a lion that was singing. Quoting again, and then there came a swift flash like fire, either from the sky or from the lion itself. And every drop of blood tingled in the children's bodies. And the deepest, wildest voice they had ever heard was saying, Narnia, awake, love, think, speak. Be walking trees, be talking beasts, be divine waters. I've always loved this parallel that Lewis has drawn from Genesis and from John 1 because it reveals the very nature of Jesus as the one speaking all things into existence itself. Out of his voice comes light and water and natures and animals and even us. The word spoken is a word that extends back before time itself. But that's not all that we learn out of this gospel message. For as Jesus has come to the world, much like in the Narnia story, he is also the light that shines into the darkness. He is light itself. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Do we hear it? Do we see it? Do we understand it? This is what we need. We need the light of Christ to shine into our lives. Revelation, indeed, tells us that in heaven, light doesn't come from the sun or this burning ball of gas, but instead, light comes from the glory of God and the Lamb, who is Jesus, is the lamp through which the light of God shines. When I think about Jesus bursting forth into our darkness... I think of this Advent wreath that we have here in our sanctuary. We just don't have it because it looks really great, and it does. We have it because it symbolizes the light of the world come in the form of Jesus. It stands as a reminder of the first moment of creation when God said, let there be light. Jesus is still the light of the world, a light living in our midst, filling us with his glow. It is not just a light out there somewhere, a light that we have to search for. He is a light that has come to us. He doesn't play some game of cosmic hide-and-seek. He makes himself known to us. A part of his promise is that he will dwell within us. That light will make a home with humanity. Earlier this week, maybe you've been paying attention to the news. I certainly was. The news about the Christmas star, right? The conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter in the sky. I don't know if you saw it, but it was pretty awesome. It was really cool. Two points of light converging, becoming one bigger point of light. Something not seen for about 800 years. Some say it's even possible that this great conjunction was the light that the Magi followed after the birth of Christ. That's a really cool thing, isn't it? We love light, and when it comes together, it's amazing. But that light out there, it doesn't really help us here, does it? This year has been dark, but the birth of Jesus reminds us that darkness is really nothing more than the absence of light. When light appears, darkness flees. When Jesus, who is the light of the world, appears, the darkness of this world flees before it. When Jesus shines into the darkness, we are all reminded that we are not alone in our suffering, in our pain, in our despair. Darkness, no matter how strong it may appear, is not strong enough to overcome even the smallest of lights. And the light that we celebrate has come into the world, has come into our lives, and it shines into the darkness. 
And this Christmas tide, then, we're given this challenge once more to respond to this light that has come. We are told that despite the fact that the world was created through him and by him, the world does not know him. We are told that even his own people rejected him. His own people. The people who know about his creation and experience his light, they fail to recognize him for who he is. Let's not make that same mistake as those first people. Instead, friends, may we all see the light this year in a new way. A light that shines into our darkness. Let us know that when we do receive him, that we receive his light and that we shine for the world. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks. Thank you for this great passage from the Gospel of John. We praise you. We praise you. And we say yes once more to your light. May your light, Lord, come into our lives. May you dwell near within us. May we see you shining into the darkness, and may we find hope there once more. We pray this in your great and glorious name. Amen. Friends, let us now sing, O Holy Night. O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the light of now confess what we believe together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was, was crucified, crucified, dead, and buried. And buried. He, he descended, descended into hell. hell. The, third the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended, ascended into heaven and, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Indeed, friends, amen. We now come to the presentation of our tithes and offerings this day, a reminder to us of the faithfulness of God, and one of the great ways that we return ourselves back to God is indeed through the giving of the things that matter to us. Our tithes and our offerings are a part of that. So we have a chance to respond together once more in faith by this giving. We do indeed return to God with great thanksgiving, a portion of that which we have first been given. We praise God this day. friends amen let us pray now together the prayer of dedication loving, loving god, god we, we give, give you thanks for the light of the world, world jesus christ through whom, whom we have, have received adoption, adoption as, as your children, children. With, with jesus our brother we dedicate, dedicate ourselves in ministry to the world that, that we may live as heirs of your promises to the honor and glory of your name amen, amen. Indeed, friends, amen. We now come to a moment of prayer within our time of worship, a moment in which we remember the goodness of God, in which we lift up those who are upon our hearts this day. We continue to remember Jim's family, Jim, who passed away this week from COVID. Oh, our hearts are heavy indeed. So we lift up his family. We also continue to pray for Ron and Muriel, both diagnosed with COVID. We lift up Ed and Joyce Sproul, Joyce who has been sent home, and also for Bob and Sally. We lift them up today as well, for Bob also is not doing well. I know, friends, we have other prayers upon our hearts today. Prayers also for Kathy and her family as she continues to recover. May she gain strength once more. Let's take these prayers now today, friends, the prayers that we have, the prayers spoken, the prayers unspoken, as we come to our God this day, first with the call to prayer, and then we'll pray together, and we'll close that time with the Lord's Prayer. Let us now prepare ourselves for prayer this morning. do pray for your love to come near for all those that we lift up this day in this season of christmas tide we do remember what you have done for us the way that you have delivered us and walked beside us all our lives the ways that you have lifted us up and strengthened us the way that you have opened up doors and closed others the way that you have led us along your paths the ways that you have refreshed us and renewed us your light that has shined into our darkness to remind us that we are not alone. We thank you, Lord, for all these ways that you have come into our lives. And now, once more, we pray that you will come into the lives of those who we lift up, both in voice and in heart, those whom we name today and those who we tremble to name. We lift up Kathy, Lord, and Bill and her family, children and grandchildren, all those, Lord, and their family. There is great heaviness there. 
We pray that you will be with her, that your hand will be, bring deliverance. We pray for your grace in this Christmas season for all of them. We lift up the family of Jim Perrin as they mourn his death. Be with them, Lord, in body and spirit. We lift up Ron and Muriel and their recovery from COVID. Be with them, Lord, in strength and help them to recover. We lift up Joyce as well as Bob as they've been sent home and told that there's really no more that can be done. Lord, I don't know what you have in store for either one, but I pray for your faithfulness to shine upon them. May your hand of grace extend to them and to their spouses and their families. It's hard, Lord, in this season in which we are to have joy to talk about things that are heavy, and yet here we are. But we are reminded that as you shine into the darkness, you do give us hope. May we see your light this day. May we find your hope all around us. May this time of worship, a time in the word, a time with family, remind us of your faithfulness in a time like this. We bring all these prayers, Lord, before you, both spoken and unspoken, as we now close our time together with the prayer that you've taught all your disciples, praying now, our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will be done, on on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day day our daily bread, bread, and and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And and lead us not into into temptation, temptation, but but deliver deliver us from from evil. For thine is the kingdom kingdom and and the the power and the the glory glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Indeed, friends, amen. We now come to our final hymn for this morning, Angels We Have Heard on High. We're going to sing four verses, so let us praise our God together. what a joy it has been 
to be able to worship with you in this season of Christmas Tide. A reminder that coming up in this next week, the office is going to be closed. We're going to be away on vacation, and so hopefully we'll be able to do that. If you do need to mail something in, the mail will be checked, so no worries about that. Also a reminder that next Sunday, January 3rd, is going to be a little bit different. We are going to be providing to you a worship service, a service of lessons and carols that comes from the Office of Worship out of Louisville. The big PCUSA is providing a service for us. And so you will see a link for that. Uh, link is already in this week's bulletin. Hopefully you'll take a see of that. Also, we'll send out reminders in the week to come, and Sunday morning that will be provided as well. And so we're taking a little bit of break between now and January. 3rd, but we'll be back together on January 10th. Friends, and again, it has been so good to have been worshiping with you this day, this season of Christmas. Let us now join together in the sending and in the benediction. Empowered, Empowered by, by the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit our, our mission, mission is to seek God, follow Christ, Christ serve and, and love our neighbor. neighbor. And now that our worship is over, let his mission begin. And let all of God's children say, Amen, Amen and, and Hallelujah. hallelujah.